If you're into Bitcoin, you've probably heard the term full node, but what exactly is it? And why would you ever want to run one yourself? Let's break it down fast. Hello all, today I will be unboxing and setting up the Umbral Home Mini PC as a Bitcoin full node and mining pool. So what exactly is a Bitcoin full node? A Bitcoin full node is open source software you download and it verifies the entire Bitcoin blockchain all the way back from block zero to the latest block. Running a full Bitcoin node offers several benefits, primarily focused on enhancing security, privacy, and control over your Bitcoin holdings. It allows for independent verification of every Bitcoin transaction and strengthens the blockchain's integrity, reducing reliance on third-party services and fostering network decentralization. You don't need to be a miner to run a full node. In fact, full nodes don't mine, and there are no financial gains or rewards to be had from running a full Bitcoin node. They just validate and relay information, keeping the network honest and decentralized. So originally, I was going to use an old Raspberry Pi 3 I already had lying around to build this full Bitcoin node. But when I started to research, it became quite apparent that an old Pi 3 didn't have enough grunt to run a full node. And in fact, people today who are using a Raspberry Pi 4 are complaining about issues with syncing and timing out. So I thought I'd build one using a new Raspberry Pi 5. However, once I started to piece together a shopping list to make this happen, it became quite apparent things would add up quickly. To buy a Raspberry Pi 5 with 16 gigs of RAM with a 2.4 gigahertz quad core ARM Cortex chip uh, with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 was about $212.50 Australian. A power supply, 27 watts, was about $21.07. A 32 gigabyte SD card, $19. A GeekPi enclosure with a NVMe SSD um, um, attachment was also quite expensive at $62.98. And of course, the two terabyte NVMe SSD um, Kingston card, uh, which was more of a respectable brand um, for the SSD was about $195. So the total was just over $510. In comparison, the Umbrella Home Mini PC uh, runs an N100 Intel quad core 3.4 gigahertz, has built-in 16 gigabytes of RAM, DDR5, and also a built-in two terabyte NVMe SSD as well for the price of 669. So for about an extra $160 difference, I opted to go for the Umbra Home Mini PC. It's a full-blown mini computer, which is far more powerful than the Raspberry Pi 5. So sorry, Raspberry Pi 5, into the bin you go for this project. Okay, so let's open up this box here. It's a beautiful Umbra logo on it. Packaging is actually quite well um, designed and manufactured. It feels high quality. Let's slide this lid off it. And there we go. There's the home device itself. It's about the size of my, my hand. A bit bigger than a, um, a Raspberry Pi device. Let's have a look. Let's peel this off. Get my fingers into it. So what we've got, we've got a power on button there, ventilation on the side, the rear we've got another ventilation socket, we've got a wired ethernet, USB-C power in adapter, and on, on the other side we've got um, more ventilation and three USB-3 uh, three connectors. Okay, it's quite a nice uh, small device, it looks and feels a bit like a um, Apple TV device. Down over here, let's have a look what's in the box. We've got the 
Ambo um, setup guide, step one, step two, step three. Three steps to set up. Pretty, pretty basic. Plug it into Ethernet, plug it into power, and then go to the browser, humble.local, to set it up. What else do we have in the box here? Okay, so we've got in here, it looks like the power adapter. Let's go see. Looks like a USB, USB C adapter, of course. US adapter, which is um, a bit of a shame seeing I paid for and bought this device and shipped it to Australia. Um, although they did ship this little dodgy um, power adapter with it. It's an Australian. So, just one other thing that I wanted to mention is given the limited um, kind of ports on this Umbrella Home device, you may have noticed that there's no video out port or HDMI port. On this device that's because these devices are designed as um, home servers and not designed to be plugged into a monitor directly and used as a, um, a mini pc or a desktop i guess that um that might give it limited use um, for this device as well should um, one day it becomes a bit dated and the hardware and tech becomes a bit uh, old and slow we can't really pre-purpose it for anything else um, and then maintaining a server of some sort. Okay, so I've just moved it over to my router because I want to actually plug it into Ethernet directly. Um, I've got an Ethernet cable here that I'm going to just run over these bit axes. Plug that in like that. And with the power. Plug the power in as well. Boom, there we go. And it looks like the power buttons um, come on straight away, which I believe um, it is powered on automatically by itself. So let's um, let's jump over to my PC and we can have a look at the interface and start getting the Bitcoin node configured. Okay, so here we are back on a PC with the Umbrel plugged into the Ethernet and powered up. So we go to a browser and we just type in umbrel.local and there we go there's the um the user interface coming straight from the device so let's go start uh we'll create um, an account so this account is stored locally um so it's there's no way for umbrel uh to reset this password for you so make sure you know what the password is so let's just type this in here Create. You are set. The umbrella is now ready. So here's the um, the home screen. Um, it comes up with a a few kind of um, apps that you might want to explore with, and at the bottom is the dock. Um, the first thing you'll notice up, up the top right is that um, there's a new um, umbrella OS 1.4 available, which I'm going to install straight away. Update brings files, brand new file manager and turn to, onto a full blown home cloud along with the Korean language support, various bug fixes and performance improvements. So let's install that now. So this is now going off to the Umbrella website to download the new firmware. A few moments later. Okay, so we're back after updating the Umbrella iOS. So let's log back in. And first thing we want to do is to install the Bitcoin node application. Install. So from my understanding, these um these apps are running in um, containers, so they should be um, fairly isolated from each other. Installing 99% done. Okay, let's open up this application. 
you can see it goes back to umbrella.local um, port 2100 okay so here we are with uh, the Bitcoin node running now I'm running version uh, 28.1.0 which is the current uh, build of the Bitcoin node you can see that I've got about 10 peers uh, connected right now um, that I'm downloading the blockchain metadata from so from my understanding it starts to download all the metadata first for the blockchains and then it will start to download the actual blockchain starting from the um, the Genesis block that was mined back in I think 2009 um, by Satoshi Nakamoto himself um, now the, the blockchain is quite large um, it's probably about 600 gigabytes at this point in time so I've been told it can take one to two days to download depending on your network speed a little longer than a few minutes later okay so all the blockchain metadata is now downloaded and you can see it's now downloading the actual blockchain uh, we're up to what 38 and a half thousand of 891,000 that's often called the block height and you can see 0% completed so it's going to take a while okay so we might stop the video here my next video I'll look at setting up um, a mining pool probably public pool.io or CK pool on the umbral and I'll mine directly to my own private pool on my own private Bitcoin node for maximum um, privacy